In this video, let's discuss various temporary restorative materials used in endodontics. It's not possible in all the cases to go ahead with single sitting root canal. So there are cases where we need to go for multiple appointments as well. Take for example, when there is pus discharge from the canal or depending upon the periapical status and also the symptoms of the patient, we need to go ahead with uh, multiple visits as well. So when we are planning for multiple visit treatment, then between appointments, it's important to seal the access cavity. And this sealing of access cavity is very essential. And here we use the so-called temporary restorative materials, which play a crucial role in providing hermetic seal or fluid tight seal against salivary contamination, bacterial penetration, and also prevents food lodgement and also lodgement of various foreign particles. And most importantly, these temporary materials prevent leakage of intracanal medicaments placed within the tooth during the process of the treatment, right? So these are some of the objectives of a temporary filling material. So let me just write down here the objectives of a temporary restorative materials. To prevent salivary contamination, to prevent bacterial penetration into the canal, to prevent lodgement of food, debris, as well as foreign objects, and most importantly prevents leakage of intracanal medicament right so these are some of the objectives of temporary restorative material ultimately the main aim is to provide hermetic or fluid tight seal the term hermetic was named based on a name of a scientist called Hermes who invented the process of making a glass tube airtight hence it's called as hermetic seal so hermetic seal means airtight seal so the objectives are the following and the aim is to provide a hermetic seal to the access cavity, right? And for any material to act as an ideal temporary filling, it should have the following properties. First, as we have discussed, it should have hermetic seal. It should set fast within the oral cavity. And once it is set, it should have adequate force or adequate strength to overcome masticatory forces. It should be easy to manipulate and also easy to remove at the time of appointment and should be tooth colored. So these are some of the ideal properties of a temporary restorative material, right? So coming to various restorative materials, starting with zinc oxide eugenol. So it's available as powder and liquid. So powder contains zinc oxide and liquid mainly or chiefly contains eugenol. So the drawback of zinc oxide eugenol cement is it has low strength and also it's more prone for leakage, right? So we have various modifications in zinc oxide eugenol cement. So these modifications, they are either IRM, calcinol. So IRM is nothing but intermediate restorative material. So these two materials they are resin reinforced so they are resin reinforced zinc oxide eugenol cements so intermediate restorative material and calcinol they are available from the manufacturer Densply. so since there is resin incorporation within the powder they can be used in stress bearing areas such as molars right that's the main advantage of these materials and compared to intermediate restorative material calcinol is fast setting and it has a shade of dentin and can also be used as a base and as temporary material as well right so the modifications of zinc oxide eugenol include intermediate restorative material and calcinol and compared to IRM calcinol is fast setting it has a shade of a dentine can be used as a base as well as temporary restorative material right and mostly because of resin reinforcement these materials can be used in stress bearing areas right hope it's clear and coming to another material called as cavit supplied by ESP so cavit is a temporary restorative material which contains mainly zinc oxide, calcium sulfate, zinc sulfate, triethanolamine, polyvinyl acetate, resin and also glycoacetate. So these are the components of cavit. Since it contains calcium sulfate, it absorbs water or moisture and it swells. So because of this swelling, there will be superior seal of the material. So the superior seal of cavit is attributed to hygroscopic nature of calcium sulfate which absorbs moisture and swells and provides adequate seal to the excess cavity right so that's the main advantage of cavit however the drawback here is it has to be placed in a minimum of 3.5 mm thickness 
This was asked in various previous entrance exams also, especially AAPG. So the minimum thickness of cavity that has to be placed in a cavity is 3.5 mm, right? Hope it's clear. And coming to another restorative material, another temporary restorative material, TERM. So TERM is nothing but it's a composite resin basically. It contains chiefly UDMA, urethane dimethacrylate. So UDMA is a chief polymer which is present within this composite resin and also it contains various inorganic fillers, pigments and also various photosensitizers and this is also supplied by dense ply. So the advantage of this term is obviously that see here in this case in case of cavity we need to place it in a minimum of 3.5 mm thickness however since term TERM is a composite resin it can be placed even in shallow cavities right so that's the main advantage of TERM can be placed in shallow cavities and coming to the duration of these temporary restorative materials so as the name itself indicates these are temporary or interim restorative materials so they are to be placed only for a temporary time period so the duration of these temporary materials should not exceed three weeks so we should either complete the treatment within three weeks or we should recall the patient and change and place a new temporary material within three weeks or else there can be dissolution and micro leakage right so the duration should be not greater than three weeks because these are basically temporary materials right that's very important and coming to the concept of single seal and double seal so as we have been discussing so far so consider this as an access cavity for a root canal treatment right so single seal is nothing but placement of a medicated cotton within the access cavity and then placing another dry cotton over this medicated cotton and then sealing the entire access cavity with a temporary material such as cavity or even IR right so it's called a single seal so single seal contains a single medicated cotton pellet surrounded by a dry cotton pellet on top of which will go with placement of either cavit or IRM and coming to double seal double seal is where we place a cotton pellet within the access cavity and then seal the inner aspect of the access cavity with a temporary stopping material such as a gutta percha so temporary stopping material is a high quality gutta percha which can be used for filling a cavity temporarily or even it can be used for dermal testing Testing. So such material is used to seal the inner aspect of the cavity and the outer aspect is covered with either cavit or intermediate restorative material. So since we have two layers of temporary materials we consider this as double seal. So that's the difference between a single seal and a double seal right hope it's clear. And to summarize all that we have discussed so far. So temporary filling materials are really essential when going for multiple appointment treatment in endodontics. So basically we seal the access cavity with temporary filling materials to provide hermetic or fluid tight seal so that there won't be any bacterial penetration, food lodgement and also lodgement of various foreign objects and most importantly prevents the leakage of intracanal medicaments placed within the tooth right so these are the main objectives of temporary restorative materials and the aim is to provide a fluid tight seal or a hermetic seal and coming to the ideal properties of various temporary filling materials it should provide hermetic seal or fluid tight seal as we have been discussing so far the material should set fast and the material should have adequate strength the moment it sets and it should be easy to manipulate and obviously easy to remove during a uh, next appointment and it should be aesthetic or tooth colored right so we have various materials available which can be used as temporary filling materials such as zinc oxide eugenol cavit intermediate restorative material calcinol and also term right so coming to zinc oxide eugenol it's a basic temporary restorative material because of its inherent drawbacks we are having modifications of jet voice such as resin reinforced jet voice such as intermediate restorative materials and calcinol both are supplied by dense ply so these materials can be used in high stress bearing areas such as posterior teeth and calcinol it is fast setting it has a shade of dentin and can also be used as a base underneath a restorations permanent restorations and coming to cavit it's supplied by ESPE it has to be placed in a minimum of 3.5 mm thickness it contains mainly zinc oxide calcium sulfate zinc sulfate along with other ingredients and since due to presence of calcium sulfate there will be absorption of moisture leading to swelling of the material providing a fluid tight hermetic seal right and coming to term 
TERM is nothing but a composite resin which chiefly contains urethane dimethacrylate supplied by Densply. The advantage is that since it's a composite temporary, it can be placed even in shallow cavities, right? And coming to the duration of these temporary materials, it can be placed for not more than three weeks or else there can be subsequent dissolution and leakage of the materials. That's the reason we call these materials as interim restorations as well. And coming to concept of single seal and double seal, single seal is nothing but placement of a medicated cotton pellet within the pulp chamber and this is surrounded by a dry cotton pellet following which we place a cavit or intermediate restorative material and double seal is a concept where we use two layers of restorative materials an inner layer covered by temporary stopping and an outer layer covered by either cavit or intermediate restorative material so this is in brief about temporary filling materials in anodontics and I'm not sure whether you are able to follow all these materials or the concepts which I have been explaining you so far. But we have one sincere student who is sitting right here observing all my classes with utmost sincerity and dedication. And here I'm introducing, ta-da! And here's my sincere student, Toffee, who has been observing all my lectures in live with lot of sincerity and dedication. Thank you, Toffee. And say hi to all our viewers. Hello. Hi. Right. Thank you.